probably didn't think I was going to talk in this video, but uh, here we are. The back part of the cabin. And uh, while that fish is cooking, it's just about there. Whoa. We are going to go check my trail cameras. I've left them out here in the woods because I'm looking for deer. I'm always looking for the next adventure. So I've got a camera here and it's been a while since I give you guys an update. I want to let you guys know what's going on with the property. I've seen some, some deer around. Um, I'm wondering if I should actually move these cameras because it seems like I might be, oh, there's a, there's a coyote. Oh, the deer are back. They're back. I thought they went missing for a while. Regularly come. That's awesome. Look at that. A couple of does coming through here. That's great. So there you go. I was worried. I had the cameras up for here for a while and I wasn't seeing anything after a while. So I thought maybe I was spooking them out here. They start using these trails more often. It's going to increase my chances of actually getting a deer this year. It's been tough going. It's funny, ever since this pandemic business started, I've been more brave in meeting with people and maybe also because people have had more time to hang out. All right, so here's the other camera here. Let's give that a check and see what's going on. The other one, oh, there's another doe. Last time uh, I was out here, actually, the uh, there was a coyote chased the fawn there. The, toad, the fawn just took off there. I'm not sure why, but there was a coyote chasing them around. That was in good business. It was really interesting to see, but it's nice to see that the uh, the fawn is okay. The doe too, obviously, but the fawn is much more vulnerable. Let's we'll see what we get next time. But, uh, we'll get back. I think that. That fish is about ready. And I got some exciting things to share with you about where that fish came from. It's planked, planked fish. Something that would have been done a long time ago when you would have had a lot of fish and it would have been hot out like today and you didn't want any of it to spoil and you had a lot of people to feed, you'd line them up on planks. So this is probably going back, you know, a few hundred years ago when people would have actually been making planks and had nails. You've seen me cook fish on rock um, you've seen me hanging it up on a stick and stuff like that. The best way to do it is to have that stick that leans over, but it's a little bit more uh, technical work, I guess, because you got to split that board in half and then fit the fish in between there and sandwich it all together in multiple sticks. Plank. The nails basically do all the work. And from planking fish before, I know that if you go 100% vertical, the top doesn't really cook because the heat wants to swoop over this way and you can never get the bottom, the bottom ends up being too close to the heat. And so what I figured out is what I did today with that rope, connect it to the back and then teeter it over the fire so you get that nice even heat. You would think it would actually be hotter at top but it's actually the opposite. So if you had your fish leaning backwards because you didn't want it to fall off, then you're actually further away from the heat and you'd think it would bellow out but it doesn't work that way in reality. What adds up happening is the bottom is burnt and the top is raw. So by actually shifting it the opposite way, it tends to work out really well. So that's something I tried today and it looks good. The only worry I have right now is that that meat will fall off and land in the fire. But so far so good, it's hanging on. Um, and you're probably wondering where that big slab of fish came from. It's a big slab. It's, uh, it's from a 20 pound salmon. So what happened is, I got an invitation from Donnie, uh, Hotbox Huts. He took me out on that bow fishing for carp a while ago. And he said, listen, I got a buddy. He's got a big boat. He's got downriggers. He's got all the rods. All you have to do is show up at 5 a.m. on the shores of Lake Ontario. I'll take you out and show you a good time. What I'm thinking now is I'll save it for a Friday video. So we'll put this out today, Tuesday. And then your Friday adventure will be how we got the fish for this adventure. And if you're wondering where I am, I'm at the cabin. This is the expansion to the cabin. This is the uh, root cellar. And we've been slowly adding things to it like maple syrup, throw some spices in there. And whenever we come out here, we can enjoy meals. And going forward into the winter time, we should be able to store foods here as well. Kevin's actually planting some gardens, which he hasn't showed yet because he doesn't think you're going to be super interested in the gardens yet. But uh, at harvest time, we'll pull some of that out, throw it in the cellar. He's got potatoes and carrots and all those root typical vegetables. And I'm overlooking the pond right now, but I'm going to keep that a mystery for now. 
because that's coming up in another video. This build's already up on his channel. I'll link that down below and he built the outhouse. And we're, uh, right now we're, we're gonna be working on a pizza oven. That's halfway done and we got some other things coming up too. So lots of adventures, but uh, I welcome you guys to give the Friday video a chance, put it that way, because it's gonna be fishing on a big boat. But as you know, on this channel, well, this is the reason for the channel is because I want to do something new and going out in a big salmon boat is something I had never, ever done before. Uh, I've caught salmon from shore, didn't really enjoy it because it's too crowded, but this was basically a bunch of good buddies. Well, new buddies, right? Um, Alex, uh, shout out to you. Thank you for taking me out. And Donnie, thanks for the invitation. So we'll roll that and uh, you'll get a kick out of it. We've got some big fish, big fish. And I hope to be able to incorporate that kind of thing in the future on the channel. So I think if we pair it up with the cooking and the bushcraft and the survival elements, I think we'll be better off. And we're working on some really great adventures. Jeremy and I are talking really good, strong plans with my uncle. He's got a float plane. He owns a float plane. He just doesn't have his license yet because he used to drive an uh, ultralight and the ultralight couldn't carry anything. But this four-seater float plane he co-owns with his, his buddy and it's parked at his house. By October, he's gonna have his license. But sooner than that, I think we might convince his buddy to fly us out for a lake and drop us off. So we're hoping to get something done by September to a fly in. It would be amazing. And these are lakes that my uncle found that are just loaded with fish. And I, the idea would be for us to, to build camp. Maybe, maybe we'll let us live in challenge, we'll see. But maybe some staple items and we'll do like so much bushcrafting, we'll set up a, a camp from nothing because these lakes are completely unspoiled. There's no roads into them, no nothing. My uncle, um, he, he goes in in the winter with a, uh, his snowmobile and he brings uh, the, the boat caches in. So he's got steel boats. He's got six steel boats at his house right now. So his plan over the winter is to bring all these boat caches out. So all he has to do is fly in. And he was telling me he has his wicked lake, a pike lake, uh, and Lake Trout Lake as well. And I think he's got some, some Brookie Lakes too. But uh, he'll go in, he'll fly in in the morning, he'll fish, and then he'll come up by the afternoon. And it's it's fairly uh, inexpensive. So like $160 round trip and gas, there and back, is freaking amazing. So it's gonna open up a whole mess of things for me. So this fish is just about to eat. I'm gonna put some maple syrup on it and give it a taste. Big freaking salmon big freaking fish. I'm pumped to give it a try. Of course, the rest is going to be shared with my family as always. That fish is looking good. Real good. The bottom is a little bit darker than the top, but I think the bottom is actually just a little bit more cooked than the top. It's hard to get smoking right, guys, to be honest. It's an art. Well, it's science and art mixed together. Well, I'm super excited to give this a taste. Cedar smoked salmon with adobo spice drizzled with maple syrup out at the Hobbit house. Let's dive in, give this a taste. You gotta get a nice chunk of meat somewhere from the middle. There'll be a couple of bones in there, no big deal. That's why we're eating with our fingers. So just pick the bones out, get a nice morsel of meat, and then we're gonna dunk that in the syrup oh dude there's no better combination than maple syrup and trout none even though this is a salmon so good stay tuned for the fishing portion which will be coming up and hope you guys support that because that's what made this meal possible and big thanks to alex for taking us out donnie and for subscriber scott for reeling in a couple fish